Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Father, be thy exalted. Father, I will come before you this hour to seek for wisdom, to seek for understanding, to seek for direction. We have come to seek for knowledge. We have come to seek to know of our true identity. We have come to seek to know what you have called us to do. We have come to seek for wisdom, for understanding. Holy Spirit, we make a demand that you open up our understanding to understand what the Father is saying to us tonight in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes of understanding. Open our ears to hear what the natural ears cannot hear. Open our eyes to see what the natural eyes cannot see. Open our hearts to begin to conceive great and mighty things. Holy Spirit, have your way, O God. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O God. We come against every spirit of heaviness, every spirit of distraction, every spirit of anxiety, every spirit of fear, every spirit that is not of God, every troubled heart, I decree peace. I decree peace. I decree peace. The Bible says the word of the Lord is quick and powerful, sharper than two edges word. Pierce them through bones and marrow. I decree peace into every heart tonight. I decree peace into every heart tonight. In the name of Jesus. I decree calmness in the name of Jesus. I decree joy into every soul. Joy into every soul. Joy into every soul. Including those who will be joining later on. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your will, O God. Holy Spirit, have your will, O God. Father, I love visit us through your word tonight. Visit us through your word tonight. As your word proceeds, the Bible says, He sent forth His word, and His word, He left them and delivered them from their destruction. The Bible said, No word of my mouth shall come back void until they prosper in what has been assigned to do. I decree and I prophesy, Lord, as your word proceed out tonight, let it accomplish its purpose in the name of Jesus. As your word proceed, let power flow in the name of Jesus. Father, let your presence invade every home tonight. Let your presence invade every home tonight. Let your presence invade every home tonight. Let your presence invade every heart tonight. Let your presence invade every soul tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, let your name alone be exalted. Bible says you have been given a name that is far above every other name that in the name of Jesus, every new shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I decree Anything that is standing against your rising, anything that is contending with your glory, I command them to bow tonight in the name of Jesus. I command them to bow tonight in the name of Jesus. Every forces, every power contending with your joy, contending with your focus, I subdue them in the name of Jesus. 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 I declare clarity of mind, clarity of direction. Holy Spirit, have your way, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Once again, I want to say good evening. Thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. So I'm going to quickly dive into it. Um, last I said uh, last, on Wednesday and Thursday, I quickly touched on, you know, the unique, the uniqueness of the identities that we have been called. Our topic tonight is actually positioning and repositioning for purpose. Because we have to understand this is, the, this is still the beginning of a new year. And it's very important that we know you know, the destination at which we are running. What is the plan? What is the purpose? Why are you running? At what destination are you running to? So it's very important to really identify um, our purpose so we can run at a great cost, you know. So, um, but before we dive into that topic, there was something Holy Spirit has put in my spirit since on Tuesday night, but I couldn't touch it on Tuesday. But, you know, uh, but I really want us to, I want to establish this so that we can really understand uh, one of the major reasons why we must really live a life of purpose. Can we open uh, Bible and scriptures to the book of um, Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. 
Matthew chapter 5. Oh, you can go ahead. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Okay, Matthew 5, verse 6, it says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Thank you very much. Brethren, I want us to understand that in this kingdom, the first prerequisite, the first requirement is hunger. It's very, very essential to get anything from God, to increase, to move to the next phase in our walk with God. It's very important to aspire to go higher. It's very, very important to aspire to go higher. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ is telling us here, he said, blessed are they which do hunger and test for righteousness. For they what? They shall be filled. They shall be filled. So what am I trying to tell you this year? Stay hungry. I'm begging you. Stay hungry. Stay hungry. Stay very hungry. Stay hungry. I'm telling you, the moment you stay hungry, I can assure you, you will always, always get answers. Answers will always come. And that's why I say it's a blessed are they which do hunger and test for righteousness. After righteousness, for they shall be what? They shall be filled. They shall be filled. Righteousness in whatsoever that is connected for God. Right standing with God. Whatsoever you are hungry for. In right standing with God. That is connected to God's purpose and God's plan for the kingdom. God we always fulfill. So now, <clears throat> I want us to move a bit further to verse, Sister Oni, I want you to read from verse 13 to 16. It says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 14, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. 16, let your light so, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thank you. So we can see here, the Lord telling us that you and I, we are what? We are the light. We can see here the Lord making us understand that you and I, we are the, it starts from verse 13. It started with the salt. It says, ye are the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. For if the salt had lost its savour, Meaning, once the lost, once the salt lost its purpose, once the the salt loses its place, where it has been positioned, say, where which shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men, brethren. I want to let you understand that you and I have been crafted, designed, and sent into this earth to fulfill a unique purpose. And that is why God uses the word salt to describe, meaning we are supposed to bring flavor. We are supposed to bring preservation. Hardly. Hardly would you find any nation of the world that does not use salt to preserve food or does not use salt to bring taste to any food. That is to tell you that you and I, we were not just sent to bring flavor, to bring uniqueness, 
to our families. We have been sent to bring flavor, preservation, beauty to our generation. Beauty to our generation. Verse 14 says, He said, Ye are the what? Are the light of the world. A city, not a man, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. A city that is set, meaning we have, that is why the Bible says, He that is from above is above all. He that is from above, because we came from above. That is why he's saying, he said, a city, a city that is set on a hill cannot hid. It cannot be hidden. Meaning, you and I, you cannot carry light and be hidden. Even, believe me, it hardly can you see any kind of light you can hide in your pocket. But you have to understand that light is in faces. You see, let me show you one. I have one light here. You see, it's in different faces. I'm going to turn it off. This is the first face. At this face of this light, of this brightness, there is a level of, of clarity it can bring to whatsoever I needed to do. This is the second face of brightness. Your level of brightness, your level of light will determine your level of impact. Your level of brightness determines your level of impact. Look at the third face now. You see, the higher, the higher your light goes high, the more brightness to bring to your world. The higher your light, your, you shine, the, the more you shine, the more brightness you bring to your world. Brethren, it's very, very important to bring what? Beauty, lightness to our world. I'm saying this to, to let you and I understand that you and I have been called, separated, like we read last week from the book of Jeremiah 1.5. I knew thee and I called you and separated you. I chose you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I'm trying to establish something here so that you can understand that there is a unique price that was paid for you because you were unique. You were selected, consecrated from the womb. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine. Meaning, it's very important to begin to understand that we are supposed to shine beyond our local assembly. We are supposed to shine beyond our jurisdiction. So to think, oh, I was just sent or I was born, you know, to achieve, get a good car, you know, get married, have good children, you know, uh, live in a good house and, you know, uh, live, just, you know, get PhD and all, you know, it's beyond living like that. That is small thinking. That is a small level of thinking. We have to think global. We have to think global. And that is why the Bible says in verse 15, it said in verse 14, it says, we're reading from the book of Matthew 5. Verse 14 says, ye are the light of the world. You and I, we have been saved to bring light, preservation, beauty, bring light to every dark places. Bring light to every dark places. Bring light to every dark lives. You look at some people's life, their lives look dark based on the kind of issues they're going through. A person who is stuck with drug addiction, their lives has been overshadowed with darkness. A person who is stuck with pornography, a person who is stuck with one thing or the other that is negative, that is darkness. You and I are supposed to bring light 
to chase out every darkness. And that's what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1. He said, John 1, 5, he said, there is a light that shineth in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Darkness can never comprehend it. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. You were born. Let me share this. <laughs> when I gave my life to Christ, December 28, 2008, two weeks after I came to this country, two years after then, in my walk with God, I had one the Holy Spirit told me. The Holy Spirit said, my son, he said, do you know that you, you must become the sacrifice for many people to shine? You must, you must, your life must become a living sacrifice. Your life must become a living sacrifice. You must sacrifice your life on the altar. Brethren, I want you to understand. Sometimes, sometimes, can you tell David to leave that place? Sometimes, sometimes you have to, you really have to, you really have to think of your family. You really have to. There are many times that things will never change because you were supposed to be the Joseph. You were supposed to bring the flavor. You were supposed to become the, the lamp offering, the sacrifice to make a turnaround in that family. So rather than waiting for savior, you must understand that you were sent to become a savior to your generation. I'm going to say that again. Rather than waiting for who will save this family, I want you to know that you might be the one sent to rescue your generation. So it's very important to really understand the place of sacrifice, the place of sacrifice. So one of the things we're trying to establish is we have been called to become a light, to become salt of this earth. Let's quickly look at the book of 1 Peter 2.9. 4 Spirit 2.9. 4 Spirit 2.9. You can go ahead and read. 1 Peter 2.9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you. Ye are a chosen generation for ye you and i a chosen generation a royal priesthood meaning you and i came from a royal background we came from a royal family a royal priest i'm, I'm establishing something in your consciousness to let you know that you you were not born small you might look small before people, but you are not small. What is inside you is greater than even you. That's why the Bible says in 1 John 4, 4, he said, don't you know, you little children, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is a greater man in you. You cannot carry a great man and be small. You cannot carry a great God and be small. It's an error. It's not possible. It's not possible. The only thing that limits that possibility is ignorance. The only thing that limits that possibility is lack of knowledge. So it's very important to understand that you and I, we are being called from a royal background. He said the holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness into its marvelous light. When you quickly open to the book of Revelation, Revelation 5.10, just want to establish something for you to see what I'm talking about. Revelation 5.10. Revelation 5.10, and has, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Did you see that? And has made us unto our God kings 
and priests. And we shall do, we shall reign. That is why God told them in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he said, have dominion, subdue. And he shall make us kings and priests. To confirm that, quickly open to the same Revelation chapter 1 from verse 4 to 6, please. Revelation 1, verse 4 to 6, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Verse six, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. Amen. Can you see that? He has made us kings and priests. Kings and priests. Kings. So please, for the young mothers here, for the young fathers to be or mother to be, remember this. Raise your sons as kings. Raise your, your daughters as queens. And that is why it's very important that the way we carry ourselves, the way we talk, the way we dress, our approach, our perception, our thinking, our reasoning, it must reflect that we are from a kingdom. We are from a kingdom, not of this world, but from above. We are from a kingdom. I gave an analogy a couple of weeks ago. I think it was last week. Some people raise their children like common children. Like common children. No, it's an error. It's an error. Go and look at people that came from the royal family in England or in Europe. Do we at least see the children? Even when you see the way they dress, they don't open their cleavages. I'm being honest with you. There is the way they carry themselves. They carry themselves with dignity. Dignity. The way they talk, the way they approach issue, their perception. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. God wants to raise a new breed, a new generation, a new, a new breed that will preserve the future. And lastly, before we go into our topic, let's look at the book of Psalm 82, verse 5 and 7. You can go ahead, Psalm 82, 5 to 7. All right, it says, they know not, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Can you see that? This is God revealing this to David. He said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk all in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. They are out of place. They have lost their position. They, they lost their place. Oh my God. Brethren, please, I beg you. <laughs> Brethren, I beg of you, do everything in your capacity to make sure you go for understanding. I'm begging you, I'm begging you, in the name of God, in the name of God, I like to dress well. I like to look good. But please, I beg you in the name of God, please hate ignorance. Hate laziness. When I mean hate, hate it with passion. You, you, you won't understand what I'm telling you. 
But if God give you understanding, you will thank me later. If you don't want your generations and my generations to go into, see, the easiest way to enslave a man or a generation is through knowledge. I'm going to read that verse again. It says, they know not, neither will they understand. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Brethren, to lack knowledge, to lack understanding, because you can't gain understanding until you obtain knowledge. I'm going to say that again. You cannot lay hands or obtain understanding because knowledge is what ignites understanding. You have, to, you have to see something to read, to understand. Understanding doesn't drop. You see, if you see a man who is asking God, God, grant me understanding. Understanding to what? What do you want to understand? What do you want to understand? And look at verse 6. He said, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. You and I, we are the little gods. God, the God of heaven, gave birth to us. The same way God gave birth to Adam. Many people don't know that. <laughs> the same way my wife went to the labor and delivery room to deliver our two kids. The same way God gave birth to Adam. God created Adam in his own image. He gave birth to Adam. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to show you. At the next Bible study, someone should remind me. You will see the genealogy. And Abraham gave birth to Isaac. And Isaac gave birth to Jacob. When they got to Adam, they said, and God, God begat Adam. <laughs> oh my God. Brethren, when I got to that place, I realized, wow, this guy was not just being created. God gave birth to him. That was why the Bible says in Genesis, and God said, let us, there was an intercourse, an intimacy. Let us create a man. Let us. So now, verse seven says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. What does that mean? God is trying to tell us that we need to be very sensitive. It's very important to discover our identity so that we know that we are not supposed to die like mere men. We are not supposed to, look, as in, end our lives like ordinary people. We should never, we should never. So we want to go into our topic tonight, which is positioning or repositioning for purpose. Positioning or repositioning yourself for purpose. Can we open our Bible to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3? Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 to 3. Well, you can go ahead. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Amen. Can you see that? This is God speaking through the prophet. And God is telling us here. He says, <clears throat> verse 1 says, he said, 
I will stand upon my watch and set upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Brethren, I want you to understand that the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. The purpose of life is to live, the purpose why you were born is to live a life of purpose. True, true success in life can only be found in purpose. True success in life can only be found in purpose. So it's, it's easy for you to look at other people's life. Like, you know, some people who are bloggers, some people who are used, you know, people do many things. You know, our generation, we interpret success to many things. But if it's not found, if that success is not associated with the plan and purpose of God, it is not true success. True success, I'll say that again, true success can only be found in God's purpose. And that is why we must be very careful of being busy, but guilty. It's easy to be busy with many things. Remember what God, Jesus Christ told um, Martha, Matter, Jesus Christ came with the disciples to visit the home of Mary and Matter. And Matter went to the kitchen to prepare the food, which is a normal, decent thing to do for anyone who is hosting a visitor. And Matter went to Jesus and said, Won't you say anything to my sister? I'm paraphrasing now. Won't you tell my sister to help me in the kitchen? And Jesus Christ told Matter, 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 matter. You are busy with many matter. <laughs> he said, your sister Mary, she has found one thing that no man, no one can take from her. Brethren, it's easy in our generation to be very busy with many things. Look, just imagine that. Just imagine every one of you, you came to my house and I have to host you. And I told my wife to go cook in the kitchen for you guys. And Jesus Christ began to speak that that food is not important. It's not as important as you being in my presence. And that is why I always say this. Please, I beg you, let your relationship with God, your intimate life, your hunger for God, be the most major thing in your life. Let that become your greatest desire. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Desire to walk with God. Let the word of God become your most important desire. Apostle Paul said that I may know him that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Brethren, please, I beg you. There are many things that can look good to you and I. Many people in church will think you are doing good, but before the lens, before the eyes of the Father, you have been misplaced. You have misplaced priority. You have misplaced the priority. If you look at verse, verse 2 of where we read in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain unto tables, upon tables, that ye may run that readed it. Write the vision, document the vision down, and make it plain upon tables, that ye may run that readed it. Brethren, one of the, this topic is the topic we're going to treat into February. Discovering, repositioning, or positioning for purpose. You see, what you discover, what you have written down, 
has a way. What you have obtained, the secret you have obtained from God has a way of liberating your generations. Can you open for me? We're going to come back here. Open for me. Deuteronomy 19.19, please. Deuteronomy 19, verse 19, it says, Then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. No, uh, that's not the verse I'm looking for. Okay. Um, the scripture I'm looking for is, um, the secret things of the Lord belongs to their children's children. I'll search it up. Yeah, I think it's in, it had, I believe it's in Deuteronomy, is that Deuteronomy or uh, either Exodus or Deuteronomy? Uh, is it, oh, Romans Deuteronomy 11. 29, 29. Oh yeah, 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Can you go ahead and read it, please? Deuteronomy 29. Verse 29 says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Thank you. The secret things belongs unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed, please. If you love God and you love the husband you will marry and you love, you want your children's children to succeed, please mark this verse down. Keep it. Meditate on it. Keep it. I will explain the reason why I'm telling you to keep it. It says, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and who? And to our children. For what? Forever. It was because Abraham discovered, oh my God, oh my God, how could Abraham wanted to bless Isaac and he did not give him money? The Bible says he lay hand, he transferred blessing through the words. The same way hands can be laid on a person, words can be laid on a person. You can transform world. You can reveal secrets. Secrets. How do you think global companies, how did they go for 200 years? How did they build legacy in their lives? Because why? They pass the secrets down to generations. They pass the secret of sustainability. Speak, please, I beg you, I beg you, find God. Find God. Don't marry a lazy man. Don't marry a lazy woman. I'm telling you, don't marry someone who is lazy, who is not willing to know God. Because a lazy man who doesn't know God and is not willing to know God, it will affect your children. It will affect how they raise your children. It will affect your family. I'm being honest with you. Ask people who, who who's, have seen by statistics, women, who are more zealous for God, women who loves God more and the husband doesn't love God, the women struggle. It's always a struggle. You know why? Because the man has been designed to lead. The woman is not supposed to lead in a family. The woman is supposed to receive direction from the husband. So when the husband is not leading, what happens? It becomes a drag. Because when the woman tries to bring direction, the husband sees the woman as being proudful. So it's very important. One of the things a woman must always look for in a man is vision and leadership. Vision and leadership. A man that loves God. A man that has a vision. A man that has a sense of direction. And look at what God is telling us here. He says, Shav, Reveal. Please go and look for what God is saying this year. 
Look for what God is saying this year. Make it, make a determination to discover, God, what are you saying concerning my family this year? What is your plan? Let's go back to Habakkuk chapter 2 again. Every product on earth was created for a specific purpose. You and I have been created for a unique purpose. Every product, God is the manufacturer. We are the product of God created for a unique purpose. The creator or the manufacturer determines the purpose of every product. You know what that means? We don't determine our purpose. The manufacturer determines the purpose of the product. You don't determine how you will live. God, the manufacturer, determines how we should live. We don't determine our purpose. We don't say, this is what I would do. This is how my life will be. No, there is already a blueprint that needed to be discovered. And that first blueprint is the word of God. The first blueprint is the word of God. We must give attention to knowledge. Attention to knowledge. You must acknowledge. Let's quickly look at the book of Luke 4. When you can go at Luke chapter 4, 17 to 18. Luke chapter 4, 17 to 18. I want us to see how Jesus Christ found his own purpose. Go ahead. It says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set liberty them that are bruised. Thank you. Did you see that? Even Jesus himself, if you read verse 17, verse 17 says, and there was delivered unto him the book, the book, the book, and there was delivered unto, the same way the Bible has been delivered unto you and I, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened, oh my God, he didn't just receive the book, he opened the book. Brethren, if you and I must discover our purpose this year, our assignment, please open the book. Oh, I said something a couple of weeks ago, please. I don't want you guys to see me as Looks like the brother is too, is too harsh, or maybe he doesn't have a social life. Believe me, I like vacation. At least I've been out of this country twice. I like to go on trips. But one thing I've learned, before I gave my life to Christ, many years ago, I used to club a lot. I love to drink. I love to party. I love to party. Like, go to the latest clubs, drink. But the moment I found Jesus, I realize I have wasted too many lives. I have wasted too many years. I'm trying to say something. Please, why do you enjoy your weekend? See it this way. You and I, we work 40 hours every week. 40 hours has been deducted out of your blood, out of your life, every day. Can't, I want you to add the time you wake up from the bed. Many of us wake up maybe five o'clock. Some wake up four o'clock and think of how much investment you invest in another company. The question is, how much time do you invest in your own life? Think about that. How much time have you decided or will you decide this year to invest 
in your own life. And one thing I've seen about any company around the world, you are replaceable anytime. You are replaceable. On my job, someone died within two weeks around COVID in 2020. Within two weeks, they already posted the person's position. The job will replace you anytime. Please, if you have PTO days, a lot of PTOs, and you know that your fellowship with God is starving, your fellowship, your relationship with God is starving, take some days off, sit with God, enjoy your time with God. PTO is not just for pleasure and vacation. It's not just for pleasure and vacation. Use it to discover. Find time to study. Use it to buy book on Amazon. Buy e-books. Use it to study. To find your identity. To invest in your own destiny. Because let me be honest with you. Our job, nine to five, you can be fired. But your work, which is your assignment, no man can fire you. No man can fire you from your work. Your work and your job is two different things. Your work is what you have discovered. If you go and read Genesis, God created Adam and he found his work. Our jobs is different. You can be replaced. The only way God can replace a man from his work is when that man has become a disappointment. So we see here in verse 17 that even Jesus himself, he did what? When he had opened the book, he did what? He found the place where it has been written. Is there someone here you have been asking God? God, show me. God, show me. God, show me. God, reveal. God, please answer my prayer. And God is saying, my son, my daughter, open the book. Open the book. Open the book. The Bible says in the book of First Peter, I believe, he said, God has given us everything unto life and to godliness. Everything you and I are looking for is in the book. It can be found in the book. How do I position or reposition myself to discover my purpose? Desperation for his will. You must be desperate and hungry to obtain the plan and purpose of God. Let's go back to the book of Uzziah, Uzziah chapter 6, verse 3. Uzziah chapter 6. Oh, you can go ahead. The book of Uzziah, Uzziah chapter 6, verse Uzziah chapter 6, verse 3. 6, verse 3? Yes, yes, verse 3, please. Says, <clears throat> then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, and the latter and former rain unto the earth. Thank you. It says, then shall we know if we what? If we follow unto what? Unto know. You can only know when you are willing to know. You see, one of the reasons why many people are never blessed on Sunday services is because many people come. It has become a routine and a culture, like a tradition. I'm going to look good today. I'm going to go to church. I'll give a good offering, you know, and I'll be in church. And meanwhile, heaven is waiting. Heaven is waiting and looking forward to see people who are willing to know, looking for people who are hungry to know. Brethren, please, I beg of you, only those who are desperate. You know, one thing I've seen about successful people, or one of the characteristics of successful people, they are always desperate and hungry. Even when they are on vacation, you see them still studying. When they are on vacation, you see them still. You see them still doing things that things you will never believe. I was reading an article last year about the rich. There was a book I was reading about um, 
um, Bilonia's Habits. And that book referenced, I think, um, some kind of analogy about rich people that average and poor people, when they want to eat, they watch movies. You see, when rich people are eating, they watch things that educate them. When rich people go on vacation, they take books with them to, to enlighten themselves. Brethren, please, I beg you, I beg you. I will never stop saying this. And I'm going to say this to the young who are singles or who are in relationship. Please pursue knowledge. Discover many things before you are married. If, if I tell you how much I struggle with time every day, because the reason why I struggle with time is because I have to give time to my family. I have to help my wife with the kids. I have to spend time with my kids. My job is there, also taking a part of my life. Because either you believe it, the jobs that we have, they, because your time is your life. Your time is your life. So the jobs are also taking a part of our lives. Time is life. To waste time is to waste life. So it's not every weekend you have to go out. It's not every weekend. Sometimes go to your best restaurant, buy to go, buy the food, bring it home, relax at home. It's not every time, every weekend you must go somewhere. Some people every weekend, they must, they can't still steal. They can't. They must be out somewhere. Meanwhile, that person doesn't understand that life is run on time. Everything on life is based on time. It's based on time to discover the right thing at the wrong time. Ah, it's dangerous. To discover, begin to do the right thing at the wrong time. Me. Oh my God. It's like you are cooking. You are supposed to put salt at the beginning of the food. Now the food is completely done. You are not adding salt to it. Whoever is going to eat that food, <laughs> that person must really prepare. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Number two, you must come neutral before God. Neutrality. Neutrality of position in the matter of God's purpose. Come neutral. Let God see the neutrality of your heart. Sister Oni, can you open to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5? I want you to use the message. Chapter 3, from verse 4 to 5 and 6. Proverbs chapter 3. You said the, the message best. Bible. Yes, please. Okay, so it has three and four together, and then five through 12. So, okay, just read from verse. Hold on, hold on. Let me read it because I'm going to stop somewhere. Okay, no problem. Yeah, so I'm going to read Proverbs chapter five. It says, Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he is the one who will keep you on track. I'm going to say that again. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go. <laughs> do you know, I'm laughing because I like to smile a lot. Even in the gym. I'm not saying this you know, to be sarcastic. There are many times, many times I'm in the gym. I'm on the treadmill. And the presence of God will visit me. And I'll be crying like this. Like, as, I mean, not tearing up. Real cry. And I'll be on the treadmill. What am I trying to tell you? You can obtain the voice of God anywhere. When I used to walk in New York, I would be on the train. And I will, I will have my ear post in my ear. And I'll be listening to preaching. And I can hear the voice. You can hear the voice of God even in the midst of crowd. You can obtain the voice of God even in the midst of the storm of life. It is possible. It is possible. 
But the first thing, trust God with all of your heart. Look forward to obtain the voice of God. In discovering your purpose, you must be desperate and hungry, but you must come with a neutral heart to trust him that God, show me, show me. He said, don't try to figure everything out on your own. That is the mistake many people are making. Many are trying to discover many things by themselves. It's not, you can't find everything on your own. When it comes to the life purpose, I won't lie to you. You can only find it through the help of the Holy Spirit. When it comes to life purpose, you can only find it through the help of the Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 3, Daniel. Proverbs chapter 3. Yeah, thank you, baby. You know. So what am I trying to say? We must acknowledge that we need help. Please acknowledge. You can't find, as I am, when I was at Excess County College, I had Muslim colleagues. When I was taking statistics, I don't, I don't ever look at age. I don't look at race. I don't look like, I don't look at culture. I don't look at religion to seek for help. Please, I'm begging you, success has no religion. Understand that language. Success does not understand religion. What, do, what does that mean? It means that when you find someone who has what you need, probably in your profession, in your career, reach out to them. Don't allow pride. Don't allow, you know, being shy to deprive you of what you can access or what will change your life. Number three, be willing to know in the place of prayer Let's open our Bible to the book of Jeremiah 6, 16. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. You can go ahead in King James. In Jeremiah 6, verse 16. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk <clears> the way, <throat> and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Let me see that. He said, Thus see the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way and walk therein? Look at the beginning. He said, God see it. This is God. Anytime you see God see the Lord is coming from the throne, from the mouth of God himself, not from angel. This is God himself. He said, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. You know what that means? Ask those who have gone ahead, how did you do it? That is why our generation must appreciate mentorship. Please, I beg you, look for mentor. Have mentors. When it comes to your professional career, have mentors. Have people who can guide you. And please, please, have mentors when you are seeking for wisdom. As I am, I have mentors I listen to when it comes to prayer. I have mentors when it comes to music. I have mentors when it comes to wisdom, the people I listen to. When it comes to the message of faith, I have mentors. When it comes to people of revelation and the word of God, I have mentors. Please obtain mentors. Because what you are trying to find that will take you months and weeks, some people have already discovered it. Mentors shorten your error. They limit your errors. They limit your journey. A journey that's supposed to take you years. By discovering their own secrets, it helps you to accelerate your journey. And that's what he's saying here. He said, ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find what? You shall find rest for your souls, but they said, we will not walk their end. And that is what many people 
in this generation, generation previous, have been doing. Not many people like knowledge. Not many people we, we seek to tell someone, please help me. I need help. Please, I'm begging you, never be proud or shy to speak for help. I'm, I'm telling, see, me, if you know me, oh my God, <laughs> believe me, I'm never shy, never shy, never, never. Even if you are a Buddhist, you are a Buddhist, and I'm taking a course, and I realize you, uh, this course, maybe on Java, or on C Sharp, and you know it very well. I will ask you, please, can you show me how do you do it? Please, I'm, I said something before. Success, because I'm asking solution from them, it doesn't become that I have joke. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 1, it says, blessed <clears throat> is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly or walketh in the seat of the scornful. Please. Because you are asking help from unbelievers doesn't mean you have become a backslider. It doesn't mean that you have become a sinner. It's not. It's not. Because if that is the case, what about people in our jobs who, who, are, who are unbelievers? When I began to work in a corporate, that was when I realized that even you see your director using the F word. You will see your senior managers. You see people around you. They use F word like normal. Oh my God. And sometimes I ask myself that I thought education degrees is supposed to educate people on how to, pre on how to talk, how to communicate. I realize it's a no. I've seen people with PhD, people with a master's degree. Still, when they communicate, they use a lot of foul languages. And I ask myself, wow. So what is the point of education? What is the essence of education? Number four, <clears throat> we must understand that asking God question is the way to get answers from God. This year, please ask God many questions. If you and I going to find our purpose, if we're going to find answers this year, Please ask God questions. Ask God questions. Send many questions to him. Many years ago, when I was trusting God for a relationship, for a life partner, I began to fast and pray. I went into three days, no food for three days, just water. Lord, show me who you have called to support me. Show me my life partner. In Nigeria, where we came from, you have to fast and pray to discover your life partner. You don't just say yes to anybody, no. Because choosing a life partner is a major decision. It can destroy your generation. It can destroy your life or make you a successful person. It doesn't mean that even when you find the right person, and you guys won't have misunderstanding, misunderstanding will happen. But when you find the right person and you put God and you, you place God at the center, of your relationship. Because there are many people, or there are many people who found the right person, who found the right person, but they misplaced God. Blessing came, God blessed them. They moved into a big mansion. They bought, they got promotion and they lost God. The moment, God, the moment they lost God, they lost their marriage. And see, please don't get me wrong. And I'm not trying to, to, be scared, to scare you. Any marriage, any man that loses God, I'm telling you, he will lose many things. It's not a cause. I'm, I'm, because God is the only one who can preserve all we have. Only God. To look, and that's why I always tell the young people around me, no matter what you are doing in church, no matter what you are doing for anybody, don't lose God. Never allow anything to replace the place of God. But if well, no matter your zeal, no matter where you are serving in the church, don't ever replace it with your relationship with God. You can be, you can be so fervent in church. People see you, oh, brother, pastor. I'm not a pastor. I hope you guys know that. I'm just a brother. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a deacon. I'm nothing. I'm just a brother. But I love God with all of my heart. 
and love God with all of my heart. I will give up everything for God. Everything for God. I'm telling you, I will give up everything I do in church for God. My desire is to walk with God. To walk, Bible says, in not walk with God. And the Lord took him. My desire. And because of this desire, I have had unique encounters. I'm telling you. I shared some story with you guys last year. 2010, we're in a Bible study. My mom was sitting next to me. And I felt someone touch me on the shoulder, very strong. And I asked her, what do you want? She said, nothing. I said, do you want a Bible reference? She said, nothing. You know? Number four. I'm going to repeat number four again. We must understand that asking questions is the way to get answers from God. Asking questions from God is the way to get answers. And this also means that not to get, not to ask questions is not to receive answers. Not to ask God questions is not, meaning there are many things God will say at his own time but many things has to be discovered through inquiry, through asking. You have to ask and continuous asking to receive answers. That is why the Bible says in the book of Matthew 7, 7 to 8, say, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall, shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Verse 8, for those that seek shall receive. For those that ask, they shall receive. For those that seek, they shall find. For those that knock, the door shall be open. If you read Amplified, Amplified says, for those that keep asking, they shall receive. For those that keep seeking, brethren, only those who keep seeking can find. Only those who keep asking can receive answers from God. So like I was saying, in that Bible study, I was asking my mom, do you need the Bible reference that the pastor called? She said, no. I said, but why did you touch me on the shoulder? She said, I didn't touch you. And the Holy Spirit said, but you have been praying. And why the Bible study was going? The Holy Spirit told me. He said, you have been praying that you want me to visit you. You want me to visit you. And he said, I just visited you. Just for you to know that I am real. Brethren, I'm not kidding you. Holy Spirit is real. It's real. There was a day we were praying. Me, my pastor, my general overseer, and another pastor, three of us. While we were praying, a flashlight, you know the flash on your, on, on, your, on your cell phone, on your camera when you want to take a picture like this. All of a sudden, a flash like this flashed through the room. About 2 a.m., we were having prayer that night. I will never forget, 2010. Brethren, please, I beg you, desire to walk with God. The devil will throw many things on your way. The devil will bring many distractions. Let your desire to walk with God. I'm going to, please, I'm not saying not to function in your place of assignment, in your place of passion. But don't let any other thing take that place of intimacy with God. I said something last, last week. And I don't want you guys to take it arrogantly. As I'm talking to you, I don't know when God will tell me to stop that prayer meeting. He can tell me to stop it anytime. I'm he can tell me to stop this Bible study anytime. Because why? Him must always come first. His relation, his intimate, our fellowship with God is what is the most important thing to God. Our offering, our giving, all those things, they are secondary. They are secondary. So please take your relationship with God very serious. Very serious. Because in that relationship, many things can be bettered. Many things can come alive to you. Many things can be discovered in your place of intimacy with God. God does not assume your needs. He confirms what you need by asking. God does not assume your need. He confirms what you need 
when you ask. So you see people say, oh, but I've been asking God. I believe God, he, that's why they call him God. He should know what I need. He should know what I'm going through. It's true. He knows what you are going through. But he won't assume how much more you need and how much liberation or freedom you desire until you ask. And that's why it's very important. We must learn to ask. We must let God realize what we desire. And that's why the Bible says in Isaiah 118, it said, come and let us reason together. Come, let us reason together. Because in that place of reasoning, your desires can be released to him. You can ask. Another point I have here is we must soak ourselves and study the word of God if we must discover our purpose. Soak the word of God because the word of God is the will of God. The word of God is the ways of God. The word of God will show you the will of God. The word of God will show you the ways of God, the ways God takes, the way he acts. He will show you the way God wants you to take. Until you locate the word, you cannot find the way. Sister, can you quickly read the book of John 14, 6? John 14, 6. Okay, John chapter 14, verse 6. Yes, please. Okay. It says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Did you see that? I am the way, the truth, and the life. When you are looking for the right way to go in life, just come, come to me. I am the way. That's why the Bible says, call upon me, and I will answer thee, and I will show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. I am the way, the truth. The truth means when you are looking for what is, the, what is God saying? The real truth. Let's say you know someone who has cancer and the person has been, everybody is saying negative thing. Go and look for the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth. I bring the truth to anything you want to know. The truth. I shared a testimony with you guys. When my wife was pregnant of our first child, the doctor said, at Three months. He said, if this baby is not terminated, this pregnancy is not terminated, the baby is going to be disabled. And I understand that because I used to work in a group home many years ago. I used to take care of people with disability. So I understand what it means for people to have disab disability. But by the time, one day my wife challenged me and she said, you are a Sunday school teacher. This was 27 to 2016. She said, you are a Sunday school teacher. Where do you stand with God? Oh my God, where do I stand with God? I went into the, I went into the world, began to pray, Lord, your word says this. Your word says, call upon me in the day of trouble and thou shalt answer me and thou shalt glorify me. He said, for those that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. I began to, you see, the days of trouble, only what has been stored in your heart will come alive. What is in the head will not be there no more. That is why we must put the word in our hearts. That was why David said in Psalm 119, he said, your word I have kept in my heart that I may not sin against you. Only what you have kept in your heart will, will, will prevent you, will preserve you, will save you in the days of temptation, in the days of adversity. Please, while you are young, while everything is going on fine, store the word, build capacity, build capacity. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. When you are looking for the true life, the true life is not in the club. The true life is not in going to 
Where is that place? Santorino. There's nothing wrong going to Santorino. In, I think it's in Greek or somewhere. There's nothing wrong in going to Maldives. But you must understand that true life can only be found in God. True life. True life is not in Gucci. There's nothing wrong wearing Gucci. There's nothing wrong wearing Sabato Ferragamo, wearing any of these luxurious, you know, Louis Vuitton. There's nothing wrong. But some people have made that their identity. That is what they call true life. That is what brings them confidence. As I am, I always tell my wife, I can go anywhere with ordinary shirts, anywhere in the midst of Caucasian, anybody, Jewish, I can enter anywhere, any community, the way I am. Because my true identity is what is inside me. Who you are on the inside is what determines who you are. Your true identity is not what you wear. What you wear is not what makes you. No. No. It's who you are on the inside. And that is why discovery of purpose is very powerful. The will of God is hidden in the ways of God. The will of God is hidden in his way. Many people, one of the reasons why many people have not found their purpose, you know why? They don't open the book. The book, please, I beg you. You see, I say something, I always say something almost every night at the prayer meeting from Monday to Thursday. I don't want you and I to become a generation that pray, 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 but lack understanding. Please, be patient to understand. There was a time in my life, I can't even, I can't read two pages of a book. I'm going to start sleeping. Or I will just lose my patience. One of you might be here too that feel the same way. Pray against it. Pray against it. It's not good. That means there's a spirit that wants you to ignore what is most important to your life. You must pray to acquire knowledge. When I was taking anatomy and physiology in Essex County, especially an, 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 anatomy one, before I took the two, and we had to do um, study the bones of the bo the bones in the body. I used to have a, a reading group. We used to read for six hours. Every three hours, we take a break. Please, I beg you, build capacity. Ask God for patience to study, patience to study, patience to understand, to comprehend. And lastly, establish the climate of worship. The place of worship is a place where God releases instruction, where he releases direction to discover purpose. Revelation has released in the place of worship. For those who know me very close here, I'm, I'm a very, I'm, I'm addict to worship. If I'm driving, if I don't listen to worship, I'm listening to preaching. I'm addict. I can travel from here to Virginia, listen to worship. When I do my eight miles run during summertime or 10 miles, I can listen to worship for two hours. Become an addict to worship. Atmosphere of worship can change your life completely. What are the channels through which God speaks to release his purpose? What are the channels of discovery of purpose? True divine direction and instruction. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. God, when he wants to begin to reveal his purpose for your life, he begins to give you instruction. 2017, the Lord told me, he said, my son, I want you to begin to observe three hours in my presence every Saturday. What we are doing now, what we are doing now, that this was how it came about. This is 2023, but 2017, the Lord told me, he said, every Saturday, when you guys finish choir practice, stay in church. I began to do it. I began to do it. After a while, Holy Spirit said, okay, now I want you to begin to pray with the men of the church. I began to pray with the men. We began to pray. We began to pray. People began to show up. Solid prayer for three hours. Prayer for 
three hours, people are standing, but they are not compelled to stand though. You know, and you can sit praying, you know. And when pandemic came 2019, you know, we couldn't meet again. Then we, we continue on Zoom and some people began to come. And after a while, people were not showing up again because of pandemic to so in-person gathering for the three hours. Guess what? I go, Holy Spirit told me, don't do it at home. Go back to church. True divine instruction. He said, go back to church. I'll be alone in church every Saturday. It got to a point, Holy Spirit told me, he said, these three hours is getting too small. A time is coming. You and I will be together for six hours, five hours, seven hours. And I've seen it happen a couple of times. So you must pay attention to the instruction because one is, okay, look at it now. It started 2017. I didn't know that we we're going to end up on meeting many of you today. One instruction is what will lead you to many things that God has called you to do. So what am I trying to say? Obey the little ones he has told you. Be faithful with what God has told you. Through meditation. Oye, could you please open to the book of Acts 10, 19, please. Acts chapter 10, verse 19. Okay, Acts 10, verse 19. Yes, it please. says, While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Can you see that? While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Brethren, Holy Spirit breathe. Holy Spirit can breathe on time of meditation. Before I was married, you know when you become married, <laughs> your life is no longer yours anymore. <laughs> what I meant is, well, if you used to be quiet, you can't be quiet anymore. Before I was married, I can drive a long distance and not play any music. Just meditation. Medi and honestly, please, I beg you, observe it. You see, those things they do in yoga, most of those things have been, they took those things from the Bible. I'm telling you, it's all psychology. When you meditate as a Christian and you, you position, do you know what it means to meditate? It means to strategically position your mind on specific thoughts. Specific, not just a mind that is quiet, a mind that is quiet to, to get answer, a mind that is quiet to evaluate. You evaluate yourself. You evaluate situation. In that place of meditation, you are asking questions. Please observe meditations. Med and that's why when you see people who talk a lot, you will lose a lot. When you talk a lot, you can't hear much. Meditate. Be a person who meditates. Observe to think. There are days I'm driving from work, even till now. When I'm driving, I shut everything down. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As I'm talking to you now, I'm already asking God, God, what is your plan for February? What is your plan for March? What is your plan for April? And you must learn to observe. You must learn to meditate. You must, you must, you must be, please observe meditation. You don't have to talk everywhere. You don't have to give response everywhere. God speaks through visions and revelation. Genesis 37 verse 5. Go ahead. Genesis 37 5. Okay, Genesis 37, verse 5, and it yes. says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. See that? Through dreams and vision, God revealed, and that is why you will always hear me during the prayer time, Monday to Thursday, that God visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. 
visit us tonight. Visit us tonight. Because, brethren, there are some things I won't share with you. For some who are close to me, I've shared it with them. 2010, God showed me specific things about my future in a dream. Specific, very clear and direct. And when I, six, seven years later, when I, when I was tired, sometimes I was discouraged. Holy Spirit brought back that vision. Say, remember what I showed you about your future. Remember my plan for you. Please pay attention to each time, even when the enemy wants to strike, they also, they, you can see a reflection in your dreams. If you observe, you don't remember your dreams, or you always been attacked, or someone is always trying to molest you sexually in your dream, take it very serious. Someone is trying to always trying to feed you, take it very your dream life should, should, should always be a place of direction, a place of vision, a place where they reveal secrets to you. A place of victory. I'm telling you, dreams are very powerful. Very, very powerful. God also speaks through bodies. Can we open to the book of Nehemiah? From verse 1 to 4, please. Nehemiah chapter 1, 1 to 4. Nehemiah chapter 1, 1 to 4. Okay, go ahead, Owen. All right. It says the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Susan the palace, verse 2, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped which were left of the, of the captivity and concerning Jerusalem. Verse three, and they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse four, and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Thank you. The question we should ask, how come even the person who brought, who brought the complaint to Nehemiah was not as compassionate as Nehemiah? How come it was only Nehemiah that took the assignment, that took the burden serious? If you read verse 3, it says, and they said unto me, and they not one person. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down. And the gates thereof are born with fire. And look at his action. Look at his reaction. And it came to pass when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept. Brethren, when you look at what is happening in the world today, what do you feel in your heart? How do, how do you feel in your heart? <clears throat> Friends, sometimes when I think of the future of my children, I'm scared. No, I'm scared. I'm scared because the evil. There's an analogy. Holy Spirit gave me weeks ago. I'm going to share with you again. We read in the book of Genesis that God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah because of perversion, lesbianism, gay, and all of those things. Right? God wiped the whole city. Let me ask you a question. How come the whole city was, was wiped off? How was the devil able to bring it back? You know what, what, do, do you know what I'm trying to show you? If a generation refused to rise and, and preserve 
holiness, righteousness in their generation. The devil, the devil will bring it back up again to thought. There are many people who, who got involved in gay and all of these things that they never practiced it. It came as thought. They, nobody, they were not manipulated. It came, the devil introduced it to them as thoughts, either through pictures or what they heard. Brethren, please look at what is happening around us today. Look at the way people are dressing. Please, as women, for the young women here, I'm praying and the young fathers to be, young mothers to be, I pray that the Lord will give you a burden a burden to realize that you are a queen, you are a mother to raise giants. You were sent to raise giants. I'm telling you, the kind of evil, the kind of darkness that is coming ahead, that is coming in the future, if you and I refuse to pray and build capacity, you can't imagine it. I'm telling you the truth, you cannot just imagine it. You cannot, you'll be so surprised how people be, you see, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to stretch your mindset too much, but please, let's pray. Let's take God very serious. Because you see, if you don't take God serious, I, I said something before, if you are night, especially if you are single, if you don't take God serious while you are single, there is a high priority when you are married, don't take God serious. Imagine how my life would be if I was never serious with God before marriage. Please take God very serious. My oldest daughter, our oldest child, she's five. The boy is four. These two kids, they know when I'm busy, they'll come tell me, Daddy, I'm going to turn on the TV for you to help you play your worship. These guys, two of them, they know the, they know my favorite music worship lead. They know the people I listen to. I don't know why. They observe. They observe. They will turn, they will, the TV is going to be on CNN. They will take it off. Or if they are watching their own cartoon, they will tell me, okay, daddy, you want to stay in the living room to study. Okay, I'm going to put it for the channel so you can listen to worship. That's their words. I want you to listen to worship. They know I'm addicted to it. Brethren, your life, your life is the first preaching to your husband or to your wife, not what you say. Your lifestyle, how you live is the first preaching to your family, not what you say. People must, people must be able to know that this one is dead for God. This one is lost for God. This one loves God more than anything. And that is why I will never be shy anywhere to give up anything in my relationship with God. I will give up any position in church to work with God. Anything, anything. I'm saying it with all simplicity, with all humility. I will give up any position in church to work with God. To work with God. Please love God. Love God. Love God with all of your heart. Love him, and you will see how God will decorate your life. Please, please. True affection. So please, let's carry burdens. The burdens of this generation. God reveals purpose through burdens. God reveals our purpose through vision and dreams. God reveals Purpose is purpose to meditation. He reveals to divine direction and instruction. He also reveals his purpose through affections and compassion. Can you read the book of Matthew 14, 14, please? Matthew 14, 14. Matthew 14, verse 14 says, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. Thank you. Compassion. Compassion. Your compassion can 
be connected to what you have been designed to fulfill. Your compassion can reflect what God is calling you to do. Compassion. Pay attention to your compassion. What draws your heart the most? When I first gave my life to Christ, how I began to know the areas God is leading me in the ministry. When I see people who are sick, I'll begin to cry. When I see people who are sick, I'll begin to cry. When I see young people who have not discovered their purpose, it, it, it burdens me. That's why you can never find anybody very close to me today. One topic I will always talk about, it's not even prayer, it's purpose. Discovering life of purpose. You see, this aspect we do in the Bible study and the prayer is one aspect of my life. There are many areas of assignment. It's not just prayer. There's a faith in my life very soon, even in this Bible study, I'll begin to teach more on wisdom and purpose. Purpose and wisdom. Living a life of purpose. So prayer is just the basic because the reason Holy Spirit is pushing me to push that prayer is for us to lift off every weight so that we can ascend, so that our spiritual organs can open up, so that our chambers, our spirits can open up. What you love doing is connected to what you will live doing. That can also be negative. What you love doing is connected to what you will live doing. True insight from life's experience. You can discover purpose through insight. Today, because I used to be a drug addict, I used to drink a lot. Today now, when God, when God saved me, two weeks after that week that I got saved, 2008, in January 2009, the Lord told me, said, my son, I'm sending you back to those you used to be with. Those people who are judged and condemned like you, I'm sending you back to them. And that is why today, you can see me in the midst of people who are smoking, who are drinking, and I'm not drinking, I'm not smoking. Why? Because there was a time in my life that I used to smoke, I used to drink, and someone told me that me, my life will never amount to anything. And today, it's a different story. So through life experience, through the things you have been through, God can use that as a message to those who are coming ahead of you. Meaning that what you pass through at times is connected to what, we, what you will pass to your generation. What you pass through is connected to what you will pass to your generation. So whatever you might be passing through now is a message God is preparing for what you will pass as a message to your generation. Because they need to understand that you have been through the same thing as well. Through discovery of life potential. Let's open our last reading. Sister Oni, can you quickly open to 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 18, please? 1 Samuel 16, 17 to 18. First Samuel 16, 17 to 18 says, And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants, and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a, com a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> the, the, the reason why I'm laughing is because every time I read this place, it touches me a lot. It touches me a lot. Let me quickly open your eyes a little bit to see something here. Verse 17 says, And so said unto his servant, Provide me a man that can play well and bring him to me. Watch. Then answered one of the servants 
and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning, meaning skillful in playing, and a mighty valiant. Look at the qualifications. This guy was in the backside of the desert, but never knew someone was watching him. But I wanted to see something. He said, a valiant man, a man of what? Of war. How can you call a man who has never been to battle? And you are calling him a man of war. He said, and prudent in matters. A comely person. And the Lord is what? Is with him. When the Lord is with someone, many things can erupt from your life. If you look at the story of Joseph and the Lord was with him and the Lord favored him and the Lord was with him in the house of Potiphar and the Lord was with him in the prison and the Lord was with him. Brethren, this year, I want you to make, let the presence of the Lord be with you. Make it, make it a request before God. Lord, let your presence go before me. But one of the reasons why we read this place is to let you know that potential what you see yourself doing, your gift can lead you to your place of purpose. It was the potential of David that brought him to the palace, even though Samuel also anointed him. But his potential, God used that to bring him to the palace. What am I trying to say? Whatever you are doing, do it well. Whatever you are doing now, do it well with excellence. Do, don't do it shabbily. Don't do it because someone is watching. Do it with all of your heart. Do it with all of your heart. This means that if you, are, if you study your potential, you will realize that it is connected to your way to your purpose. And that is why God will always demand from you based on what he has deposited in you. God will only demand from you based on what he has deposited within you. Brethren, please discover what has been placed in you. It takes time. It takes focus. It, take, it takes dedication, commitment to discover anything. Please, I'm begging you. I want you to end this year very well on a good note. But the beginning of the year is like the beginning of a semester. The first four weeks of a semester of any college is preparation, study. The curriculum already tells you that at social so time, you will have quizzes. You will be tested. Brethren, January is about to expire. What are you chasing this year? What is your focus this year? What, is, what have you discovered this year? Aside, aside from your personal goal, you want to obtain a good job, you're learning a professional skill, you want this, you want that. What have you discovered from God? If you have discovered it, God bless you, then run with it. If you haven't, don't stop asking. What is the advice? Be determined to apprehend what God had called you to do. Be determined to apprehend, to apprehend, to discover what God has called you to do. Be determined. Be determined. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's why the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Be determined. Keep asking. Keep asking. Keep asking. Keep asking until you find. Don't stop. I'm telling you. There's what we call prayer of inquiry. Keep God, show me your plan. Don't let me live a wasted life. Before God appeared to me in 2010 and showed me his plan for me, I went into days of fasting. No food, just water. No food. I'll be so, I'll be so fired up in that prayer. I'll be telling God, God, if you don't show me, I will break the door open. 
I mean, the door I'm talking about is not the physical door. I'm talking about the door that is blocking what I need to see. I will break the door open. God, show me your plan. I don't want to live a wasted life. I have just one life to live. And the life of my children depend on this life. I hope you know that. The life of your children, it depends on what you have discovered. If you discovered nothing, it will affect the children. Two, be determined to pursue purpose without distraction. This means you must cut off every distraction this year. Anyone who is bringing distraction to your life, any game, any sport you like, any show. I used to be very addicted to many years ago when they are still there. I used to like action movie. When, when the series comes out and one day Holy Spirit told me, said, my son, do you know that this thing is replacing our time? And you know, series can really, series, those movies in series, it can suck you in so deeply that before you know it, every day you are so, you don't even have time for God anymore. Please, I'm begging you, cut off any distraction. Anything that has become a distraction. If it's social media, you observe, you spend a lot of time on social media, cut it down. Cut down every, if it's a man, a woman, anyone who has become a distraction, they always call you to waste your time. Let's go social place. Let's go out in. Let, when they call, you don't pick up. When you pick up, tell them you are busy. Learn to say no sometimes. Don't be shy to say no. People, there's a proverb in my country. They says a man who comes to the field to fight, to the boxing ring, he doesn't pay attention to the audience. A man who goes to the market, he does not listen to the noises in the market square. It's like you went to shop right now and you are looking at what everybody is saying in shop right. When are you going to leave shop right to go back home? What I'm trying to tell you is you are in this earth to fulfill purpose. Cut off distraction to avoid delay. Cut off distraction to avoid diversion. Cut of distraction. Cut of distraction so you can focus. I want us to pray. That Lord, help me to discover what you are saying this season for me. Show me your plan for this season. Show me your plan. Don't let me miss it. We're about to enter February. I don't know what you are saying. I don't know what you want me to do in February. I don't know your plan and purpose. God, show me your plan. Don't let me miss it. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Father, we come before you as your children. Father, don't let us miss it, O oh God. Show us your plan for our lives, O oh God. Show us your plan for our lives, O oh God. Review your plan and purpose for us this season. Review your plan and purpose for us this season. Review your plan and purpose for us this season. Review your plan and purpose for us this season. Review your plan and purpose for us this season. Review your plan, O God. 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 Review your plan and purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and ask God that Lord visit me in your mercy tonight this season. Visit me that I may obtain what you have written in the book of life for me. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Jesus Father, said, visit, me. Me visit me. Visit me. Visit me that I may obtain what you have written in the book of life for me. Visit me, O God. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And lastly, I want us to pray that Lord, help me to spend time in your word this year. 
prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, my Lord and my God, Jesus, God help, help me to spend, spend time in your word this year. Help me to spend quality, quality time, quality time, time in your word. Help me to spend, oh God, quality time in your word. Help me to spend quality time in your word. Help me to spend quality time in your word. Help me to spend quality time in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you for your mercy. Thank, thank you. you for your grace. Thank, thank you. you for how far you have taken us tonight. Thank the Bible you. says, both to will and to do is of him that walketh in us. Father, the grace to be a doer of your word, the grace to stay in your presence. Let that grace be released upon us in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Daddy, I make a demand for those that need a new beginning. For those who are fallen and they have risen, that they raise them up afresh in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Daddy, I make a demand for strength. Let every feeble news receive strength. Amen. Let every weak ends receive strength. Amen. Daddy, I make a demand for strength. Strength for a new beginning. Amen. 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 The Bible says, arise and shine for your light has come. I decree, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Now let your name alone be exalted. Father, visit us tonight. Reveal yes, yourself to us. Yes, visit us tonight. Reveal yes, yourself to us. Yes, visit us tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. But as we go to church tomorrow, that the encounters through worship, yes, encounters in your word. Father, yes. let your name alone be exalted, O oh God. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Guys, thank you very much. Please, if you're joining us for the first time, you want us to add your name to the group chat on WhatsApp, please. You can drop your name, your number. In the chat so we can add it to the group thank you once again please don't forget to join the prayer meeting the prayer meeting continues on monday to thursday it's going to be from 10 p.m to 11 p.m monday to thursday please kindly come and the lord will help you in jesus name come expectant come expectant and you know whatever you might be going through please don't give up on yourself god has not given up on you stay focused stay focused what you are going through is not who you are. I want you to understand that. What you are going through, what men have said about you, is not who you are. Who you are is about to emerge. Who you truly are is about to emerge. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, Uncle Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Uncle T. Thank you, Brotao. You're welcome. Thank you, sir.